Assalamualaikum and good evening to all. I'm Dipesh Prabhakar, head of HR Steve Craft. During the next 90 minutes, the panel will discuss the interesting topic, core to IT. So if you are willing to switch to the IT industry, this webinar is for you. I have my colleague and panel Himanshu, Tajagna, Kelvin and Surendra. Welcome everyone to the webinar. Himanshu is a well-known techie. He is the CEO and founder of Steve Graph Systems. As we go forward, you will also be knowing more about our panel members. With this, I would like to invite Himanshu to formally start the webinar. Himanshu, over to you. Good evening, everyone. So, uh, am I audible and visible? Yes, Himanshu. And, Loud and clear. Uh, you see my screen as well? Yes. Okay. Perfect. It's visible. Okay. So, one more time. Good evening, everyone. So, today we are going to talk about opportunities in field and domain for core industry professionals, especially those who are working in the any automotive industry or manufacturing industry with the background of mechanical engineering, production engineering, or similar educational background or the work experience. There is a lot of opportunities for the people from the industry, the core industry, into the software industry. Because software is ultimately for for, for manufacturing industry, for the other industries like automotive, aerospace, industrial equipments, pharmaceutical, or many others. So that's where your functional knowledge, your knowledge as a user is very much useful. So you as a candidate with this knowledge, when you add additional software related knowledge, you can add a lot of value in the software industry. So there is a huge potential for people from manufacturing. So my name is Himanshu Zalawadia. I'm the CEO for Stipraf Systems. I have more than 20 years of experience in PLM domain. As an educational background, I myself is a mechanical engineer. I started as a software engineer in the PLM domain. PLM stands for product life cycle management. And uh, PLM is used in manufacturing or any product company that's where my educational background makes sense and on top of that when i acquire the software related knowledge with together with this we can make a difference to the customer so we have been as a steep graph we have been implementing plm softwares we are helping product companies to use the plm softwares i will talk more about Graph and other things in the, as we go forward. So as a today's agenda, like we are going to talk about uh, basic of the PLM. What is PLM? PLM introduction. Then we'll be talking about opportunities for mechanical engineers, four to eight years of experience. Like if you are in the early stage of your career, what are the opportunities? If you are into the later stage of your career, what are the opportunities? And then we'll have the small questionnaire. To understand your interest, where you stand today, and what could be the potential for you. And then we'll be talking what is required to get into the IT industry, you know, by leveraging your current experience and where to start as a PLM developer or as a PLM functional consultant or PLM project manager. And then we'll have the brief of Stibra and we can open the webinar for questions and answers. So this would be the outline for today's webinar. So let me talk, uh, give the little background about Steve Graf. So Steve Graf is well known into the PLM industry. So we are PLM system integrator with advanced tool set. Steve Graf is founded in 2009. So we are in industry for more than 14 years. We have 100 plus customers, 200 plus projects which we have executed multiple plus employees we have and we have been working globally in Europe, North America, Asia Pacific, India. Muted. Unmuted. Our global partnership is with 
Dassault system, which is a France-based company, and uh, Aras Corporation, which is US-based company. So these are the two companies who has their own PLM softwares. So Dassault has their own PLM software called 3D Experience Platform, and Aras Corporation has a PLM software as Aras Nova. Apart from these two PLM platforms, there are many other well-known PLM platforms. One from Siemens, which is Steam Center. One from PTC, which is Windchill or PDM Link. There is from Oracle, Agile, SAP PLM, and many others on the cloud as well. But these are the well-known names into the PLM industry, and they are leading the market. So anybody who is into the PLM domain, they come across one of these softwares when they go to large product manufacturers to implement the PLM. <clears throat> so uh, I will I will explain a little bit more about the PLM, those who are not exposed to the PLM. So PLM stands for product lifecycle management. In any product manufacturing company, For managing the entire product portfolio, starting from understanding the requirements, uh, defining the requirement for the product, managing all these requirements, it is called requirement management. Then, based on this requirement, CAD designs are created either in CATIA, CREO, NX, or any CAD software. So, this, this is called the CAD data management. All this CAD structure has to be managed into the PDM system or the PLM system. It is all made into the PLM with the version control. People can collaboratively, collaboratively work on the same uh, assembly with the multiple designers can check in, check out, and can work on the same assembly. So product companies can plan their prototypes, you know, their best process, and they can also do the manufacturing planning. For example, your process planning, process flow diagram, you know, your FEQB process. So this is all can be done as a project management inside the PLM. So this is all part of the design department. We are still not talking about the manufacturing side. So PLM's role is to manage the product data as well as the, all the business processes of designing, uh, approval mechanism, maturity, configuration management, change management, issue management, quality systems and quality management. So this is all happening as part of the PLM software. So, any industry may be automotive, and examples are say Honda, Toyota, you know, Tata Motors, all are using PLM. So, I know Chela, BMW, they are all using PLM. Any aerospace company, Boeing, Airbus, or so many other aircraft manufacturers, they are using the PLM. Industrial equipment companies like you know, robot manufacturers, CNC machine manufacturers, all are using PLM to manage the complex business process. PLM helps customers to manage their data effectively. There is always single truth of the information so that any new product innovation can be faster. They can launch their new products into the market faster and they can, they can stand against the competition. That's the objective of the PLM. The ultimate outcome of the PLM is to create the blueprint of your product. You know, in terms of CAD design, in terms of all the documents, specifications, in terms of your manufacturing planning, robotics planning, so all is happening in PLM. Once your blueprint, the one single truth is, is, is finalized, it is called the release step. And once it is released, it is pushed to the ERP system like SAP or Oracle Manufacturing or something similar. And from there, PLM's role is finished. PLM transfers its final blueprint, which could be manufacturing bill of material for the EVO uh, and a lot of other data into the ERP system. And that from there, the ERP system manages the production activities. So here is the boundary between PLM and ERP. So there are a lot of CAD softwares which are integrated to the PLM, like Katia, SolidWorks, NX, Creo, they are having the integration with the PLM. So this is the one example of the Dassault system. Similarly, for the Aras innovator, Team Center, they all have a lot of CAD integrations. 
not only the MCAD, but also the eCAD software like Zucan, Metagraphics, Altium, they are all connected to the BLM. Because nowadays, all the products are having electronics components as well as the mechanical components. And the new product development is becoming more and more complex where there is a software part, there is an electronics part, there is a mechanical part, and all this has to go together. So that's where the complex collaboration is required. Again, the design team is across the globe. They are not sitting under the one group. So that requires another level of the complexity, the how to collaborate. So this collaboration is one of the most important part of the PLM systems. So now you people is coming from the industry experience. You are the one who are the user of the PLM system because you are either part of the product design, product development, or the manufacturing planning. So you are dealing with a lot of data, which is CAD data or the quality data or manufacturing planning process or the factory layout process. For all this data, what you have, the process which you have, the approval mechanism, maturity mechanism, change management, all today without PLM, you might be doing into the Excel files and documents or some ad hoc or, or, or support solutions. Once you use come to the PLM, then like this, all modules are integrated. The change management, conflicts management, account management, care data management, bomb management, variant configurations, everything is connected. So that's where the PLM makes sense. And your experience as a user can adopt the understanding of the PLM much, much faster. You can precisely understand how to use this software effectively for the betterment of the entire design department. So you know what are the challenges designers are facing. You know the challenges the what project management is facing. You know the challenges to customer collaboration, interacting with the manufacturing people. You, know, you are facing so back and forth communication, a lot of rework. The issues are coming at the later stage. You know, so all the problems you know much better as, as per your industry experience. So your functional knowledge, your business process knowledge, your industry knowledge is, is essential for effective PLM implementation. Now, if I talk from steep graph perspective with the PLM system integrator, and there are many other PLM system integrators like IBM, Accenture, Capgemini, you know, uh, Deloitte, so many, many, many players are there. So our job as a PLM service provider or the system integrator to implement the PLM to the product manufacturing company. So when you are part of such PLM system integrator, <coughs> you understand the capabilities of the PLM software and you also understand what my customer wants and you can easily map the customer requirements, customer challenges, customer pain points, customer priorities, customer use cases to the solution which is coming from PLM platform. So, so that is where you can add a lot of value. So this is this is where I see the potential opportunities for people coming from manufacturing industry. So now let's let's talk like you now what are the opportunities for mechanical engineers who are having let's say four to eight years of experience or three to eight years of experience. I we have created two brackets, you know, four to eight years of experience people and eight to twenty years of experience. I'll tell you the reason why. Those who are in the early stage into the mechanical industry or manufacturing industry, they are young. They are learning a lot of new softwares. They are still into the designing activities. They are working with the CAD, FATIA, NX, CREO. They are working with the quality documentation in collaborations. So you already have a good knowledge of designing, quality processes, uh, as well as the ISO standards, customer collaboration, and so on. At the same time, you may not have the large project management experience, but you are open to learn the IT skills like programming. 
So for four to eight years of experience, they are best fit as a PLM developer by just simply adding some programming skills. So at Steve Rapp and at so many other IT companies, there are a lot of people from mechanical background, production background, electrical and ENTC background as well. And learning any programming language is not a big deal. It can be learned in, in a month. If you, if you have the desire, if you have the interest to learn it. And there are a lot of online platforms, online uh, websites, YouTube videos are available. One of the most easy and accessible website is W3School. If you go to W3School, it has a lot of different languages. Whatever language you want to learn, they will start teaching you this language from very basics. How to write the hello world. How to do 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. How to check one condition 10 times. So very basic things. It's all logics. It's all uh, common sense. And the people who are coming from the real world, the industry, you know, they are already having enough experience to understand this logic very fast. So, and you can learn this programming very quickly from, from this website. W3 School is one of the examples. And once you start your journey, you will definitely find a lot of different platforms like Udemy as well as a lot of YouTube channels. You know? And I suggest, I'm, I'm not going to give the name of all the channels at, at this webinar. We can certainly share more going forward. But today I am not going to share because searching the right starting point itself is one of the very important step. Because I always believe that if you learn how to search the right content from the Google and from the YouTube, that is one of the very important learning for the software industry. Because software IT industry is changing very rapidly. And every day new technologies, new tools, new softwares are coming. Everybody who is a part of this industry, they need to learn new things very quickly, adapt to the new things quickly. And for that, you need to be good in searching, good in identifying what is good for me, what is what I want to learn and product. As a first step, I already told you, go to W3 schools. But once you have the basic understanding, you can find a lot of other resources on there. And then once you have the basic understanding of the programming, SQL, only basics. I'm not expecting you to be the computer engineer in one month. With this basic understanding and your industry knowledge, you can take your first step into the IT industry. Now let me let me explain when you get into the PLM industry, what kind of skills are required? Now, how is the bifurcation of the skill? I always say it is into the primarily into the three buckets. 30% skills which are required is programming. Another 30% skills which are required is your industry knowledge. What about you know, what customer wants, how the design process works, how the quality documents are happening, what is important, how the emotes are created, how the emotes are created. You know? So you understand this so as a domain expertise. In the third bucket is the knowledge of the PLM software on which you are going to implement the PLM. So that could be either 3D experience or RAS innovator or Siemens Team Center or PTC Mutual. One of the PLM software which you need to learn how to configure this software, how this software works, what are the different options, what are the different modules available, you know, how to configure the workflow, how to configure the life cycle, how to configure the project into this PLM software, how to create the team, how to uh, control the access to the different team. So this is all configurations. Nowadays, all the softwares are going towards the low code programming. Low code means minimal coding, maximum configurations. And that's where I see very high opportunities you know, for the people who are coming from the non it area. Because what all you need is the common sense, learnability, 
to use the different configuration to create the desired solution for a customer. So all PLM softwares are already pre-built softwares. We are not going to create from the scratch, number one. We are going to take the software. We understand how to configure this, how to tune this, how to add new menus, how to add new tables, how to add new actions. And then you go to customer. You understand what my customer wants, what is their business processes, what is their change management processes, what is their candidate management processes, and configure into the out of the box without doing any coding. Leverage as much as the configuration. This is what everybody wants, even the customer as well as the PLM software providers that do the minimum, minimum customization and do the maximum configuration so that future upgrades, new releases are easy to adapt. So that's where uh, the possibility for anybody coming from the industry is much becomes much higher. So I hope so far I am able to convince that with your background, you can do the wonders and you can adopt to the PLM domain when you are four to eight years. And especially like when in four to eight years, I do expect this audience to learn the programming because once you are understanding this PLM domain configuration with your industrial background, at some point of time, you will have to do the programming as well, which will be there for 10 to 20 percent. For doing some integration with other enterprise applications like ERP or CRM or other systems, or for the data migration, or for some special report generation. So this is very essential. If you want to become the PLM developer, you have to have the knowledge of the programming. It may not be high complex programming, but more you understand the programming, more versatile you become. So whenever the companies like Steve Graf hires the people from the industry, we expect that they learn the programming, they learn the PLM software, and eventually to play the role as a PLM developer. As they go forward, there could be even more interesting journey for them. So if I go to the next slide here, what are the opportunities for the mechanical engineers or engineers coming from the industry with the 8 to 20 years of experience? So here I would like to invite my colleague and PLM expert, Mr. Surendra Singh, he is going to explain his journey because he himself is coming from mechanical industry and now he is a very senior PLM consultant in digital manufacturing. So I would like to invite him and probably he can share his experience, what is there for the people with, who has a lot of industry experience. So here is the brief introduction about our speaker, Mr. Surinder Singh. He is 15 plus years of industry experience as digital manufacturing lead and consultant with Delmia. So Delmia is one of the manufacturing planning software with a lot of sub products into that, which is from the Daso System 3D Express platform. So Surindra, you are welcome. And you can share your manufacturing, digital manufacturing experience and your journey as well and what kind of expertise you have and how the digital manufacturing helps the industry. So please welcome Mr. Surendra. Thank you. Surendra, you can unmute yourself. And yeah, thank you. Thank you, Imansu, for uh, explaining in a very nice way and uh, giving uh, uh, setting a platform and context for the people for the um, teams who whosoever are present here and uh, introducing me. Um, so uh, I'll just introduce about myself and how I started my career and how I choose, you know, PLM industry, IT industry to, you know, uh, see myself growing in uh, IT industry. So I started my career as a design engineer 
initially uh, i was you know the same thing i was doing it for uh, doing the 3d modeling through different software like himans already named lot of software in initial uh, talk and then i you know got some opportunity and my willingness was to you know go in uh, manufacturing domain where i can apply my learning you know knowledge as a design engineer in the beginning of my career like i i was working as a design engineer for 3 to 4 years and then i moved to this industry and i started working as a plm consultant and uh, now i am associated with uh, steve brock as a senior consultant for you know digital manufacturing platform uh, maybe him once i can request if you can go to the next slide thank you so we need to understand so some of you might be already you know working in this you know uh, the terms what you can see in the screen or in the slides so you already may be working somewhere but we just what we are trying to see here that we are trying to connect your dots so that you can you know when this session ends you are able to understand and you are able to you know take a right decision for your transformation of the career so in in digital manufacturing journey every industry let it be oem or tire one supplier tire two supplier everyone has their own infrastructure which is already available in the premises so first step is to have the sufficient which can fulfill the um, uh, environment to start this journey so i believe every industry has has it then being as a design engineer uh, some of you might be working in uh, modeling area uh, doing the uh, 3d design then making the manufacturing drawing releasing the drawing you might be releasing you know e bomb maybe in a uh, drawing format excel format other format but the things are remain same here so the second thing is to manage the e bomb and then m bomb uh, so m bomb is nothing but your manufacturing bomb so from e bomb maybe it is 150% e bomb how you are going to have the 100% of the uh, manufacturing bomb which will be required to produce a particular type of product okay and to produce that product what we need we need a process okay so it can be any process any manufacturing process it may be a machining process it may be fabrication process it may be a sheet in sheet metal industry process okay so this what the process is required maybe few people will be from the process background they might be working as a process engineer they might already know what is the processes like how we make a complete product so that which we deliver to the end customer so that is called as a product and how you manufacture is a process then to produce that you know uh, to deliver that product what equipment we need how many operators may be i required how many machines i required how many robots i would required in my manufacturing line or my manufacturing assembly so that i need to know whether all these equipments or all these you know uh, uh, nowadays you might be knowing the cobots which works with the along with the operator soft floor operator are they working efficiently and effectively in the line so that's where we do some line balancing to tweak the you know manufacturing assembly line so that we get the required output within the you know customer desired uh, time so that is called like you know cycle time tech time you some some of you people might be already knowing who are working as a design engineer or who, who are working as a, you know in manufacturing domain maybe some some people are working in plant uh, also then uh, now here comes with the virtual environment so we will have virtual software there are n number of virtual software available in market so deso platform siemens platform ptc platform where we create you know layout of our manufacturing line 
so you might see the some uh, images in the top uh, small images where you place your equipment your conveyors your robots your operator from which location you are taking a part like bin location a storage location buffer location we decide we create a uh, you know concept layout we discuss with uh, manufacturing engineer chief engineer and then we uh, utilize that layout for the further simulation to understand are we able to produce the desired part in a desired cycle time so like simulation so robotic simulations are there then ergonomic simulations are there assembly simulations are there then plant simulations are there where we we especially understand how the material will flow from one location to next location and how the, from the starting to end how the product will flow so himansu can we go to next slide please yeah now here it is very important to understand what comes under the digital manufacturing so um, we we already know like uh, in previous uh, slide i talk about what we are going to produce and how we are going to produce and through what or by means what you are going to produce so that is called product process and resources so product is nothing but your the end end product which i want to deliver to a customer as a oem this is my product i want to deliver to customer then processes is nothing but what type of process i want to follow to make a cost effective product you know it is very essential to have a cost effective process so that i can produce my product in minimal cost and early to the markets there are a lot of competitors in the market you, you can see in any domain let it be you know food and beverage industry automotive industry zero space industries electronics industries there are a lot of competitors and i need to be the you know first one to be in the market to launch my product so that's what we will uh, consider under the process and how we are going to produce through what we are going to produce is it robot required or not required for manufacturing line can i manage with only the operators can i make it only manual uh, process or can i you know make the fully automated process where i need just uh, you know all everything automated so that comes under the resources you can see one interesting graph here actually we need to understand it very uh, deeply so this graph talk about the top one if you see how the general uh, processes are being followed in the any industries like they will do first the design activity they will gather the design requirement they will do do the complete product design they will take the customer approval then they will go for the industrialization they will launch the toolings they will release po to the suppliers and vendor for tool tooling manufacturing and then they will start the assembly in the plant but this will you know create a problem create a challenge if if at any time if we see there is a problem in the product what i i want to desire to produce and i am not able to achieve it then it's very costly to reverse the processes or to change the processes and then again do the um, recosting everything so if you are able to leverage this digital manufacturing or uh, virtual environment perfectly we can save the time we can save the cost we can optimize our product we can improve the quality of our product so you can see some activity can be parallel like design and industrialization activity it can be parallel we can do the virtual validation i can do the verification i i can utilize robot in early design phase to understand whether i am able to do the you know assembly through my robots or not let it be mig welding mag welding or any kind of you know spot welding hemming operation so where uh, industrial robots are required uh, maybe it's multiple robots even in in one uh, manufacturing cell it may be multiple robots six to seven ro uh, robots even more than that how 
all these will col collaborate with each other when they start working together we'll be able to do permutation and combination and make our process efficiently so this is what we uh, measure benefit we can see by using this digital manufacturing uh, platform and being as you know design engineer or uh, manufacturing engineer somewhere you might be working in you know some of the stages and the opportunity is to you know you, how you can integrate your experience previous experience into the plm area yep can we go to next slide please So this is one of the uh, aspects or one of the area where again it comes uh, for the usage of your manufacturing experience like robotic simulations. So as I said, uh, we can we can utilize the industrial robots before even you know producing the actual part. So we can do the uh, permutation and combina combination we will be able to optimize our layouts we will be able to do the robot programming in a efficient way you know there are huge you know library available uh, in the cad platform where we can select any type of robot which can do the purpose of manufacturing and we can able to save some cost we are able to do everything in a right way from the beginning, we will be do, doing everything in a perfect way. Okay. Then one of the major benefit is that whatever programming we do in virtual environment, that can be taken to the soft floor. That is called something offline programming. Maybe some of the engineer uh, who might be working in CNC machine, they already know it. So there are software available where we can do the programming for CNC and take it to the actual machine through the controller the same way works for the robotic simulation and this is very very uh, benefit for the industry there are many industries who are you know having this type of capability who are leveraging this uh, solutions yeah the best can we go to next slide please So this is one of the very, uh, you know, um, fascinating things for the people, those who who are, or maybe those who have been into the soft floor area. So they can easily correlate looking at the pictures. So one of the major aspect is that I have my product data, I have my process in place, but I need to understand that do I am able or do I am capable of producing a part within the you know given time time requirement so if even though if you are exceeding by one second or uh, i would say fraction of a second still you are not meeting the customer requirement so this technology will help you or any oem or any company any uh, suppliers to understand that whatever process is being designed or it is being considered it is meeting my criteria to produce a part in required time okay and even though if there is any challenge in any let's say any machine there is a challenge where it is taking more time we will be able able to tweak it you know and we will be able to find the solution before we go for the industrialization before we start our sop or even i would say before we start our production trial okay so this is one of the important things that it will help every industries to optimize their processes and have the right process from the beginning okay can we go to next one Now, one of the uh, important uh, simulation what we can do through Delmia or uh, 3D experience platform is doing the ergonomics analysis. So the, the ultimate you know, uh, purpose is here 
that we need to understand that our operators those who are deputed or those who are assigned to perform a task are they able to do it comfort in a comfort way or are they facing any challenges okay my comp uh, operator can complain that i am not able to produce 10 parts within the ship so i need to understand i cannot blame my uh, operator why you are not able to do that i need to understand what type of problem he might be facing in doing the assembly so you can see like maybe the operator is not comfortable to reach the desired location to assemble the parts he might be you know having a collision or interference with the toolings with the equipment with the surroundings or the height where he is working is not good for him so maybe this type of problems will come across and we need to understand the reason behind why my operator is not effectively working it is not only because of the uh, you know shortfall in the processes it may be because my equipments are not manufactured record to accommodate my operators in the assembly station so this uh, particular app or this particular technology will help you to understand that your operator is working in a comfortable way he is not going to have a fatigue during the complete cycle okay so they will be lifting a huge part they will be lifting a small part we need to understand whether when he is able to uh, lift the part easily or we need to you know bring some you know helping equipments in the line whether i need some robot kind of things or whether i need some crane overhanging crane zip crane to assist the operator to lift the part from one location to next location so this particular app or this particular workbench will help you to do that type of simulation yeah next slide please now uh, so i'll just summarize it here whatever i have been talking from uh, last three to four slides so these are the you know vast level you can see these are the some of the important expect of you know digital manufacturing where we all can contribute you know so starting from the bomb management then configuration and library management process authoring line balancing change management work instruction work instruction is very very important you know how effectively i can you know transfer my communication to the workshop operator you know this is very effective and very helpful to even train the you know um, less skilled people or less skilled operator they will understand what exactly i need to do how i need to perform my assembly what is the you know manufacturing process i need to follow then the kind of reporting it is required bomb com comparison then bomb chain management process chain management you know line wise processes service bomb bill of materials then manufacturing bomb so this all we can do it through the help of digital manufacturing softwares then i talk about the plant layout we, we can create a virtual factory we can see it we can even do the walk through we can optimize these layouts then we can you know uh, do the even designing the tools or the equipment which is required to produce the product we can do that activity also and then the last thing is the ultimate thing is to understand whether we are able to do the assembly in a perfect way so the simulation parts comes in where we can do like you know exploded view we can create we can create the assembly path we can uh, create the disassembly path we can create ergonomics analysis we can create a, you know interface checking things type of things then factory flow simulation robotic simulation so these all we can do through the digital software and in steep graph we are using delmia software and 3d experience platform 
for doing this type of activity and there are now um, Himansu was talking about the some of the openings uh, so maybe Himansu over to you you can uh, take it from here thank you Himanshu, you need to unmute yourself. Unmuted. Thank you so much, uh, Surendra. Thank you so much for your introduction on digital manufacturing. And this, your explanation and your brief introduction about digital manufacturing definitely helps our audience to connect what they are doing today to uh, the PLM software's capabilities and how their real world problems, real world activities are connected to the PLM domain. So this, this is from the manufacturing process planning point of view. But then the other side, which I already explained, is a lot more on the business processes, which is care data management, document management, change management, configuration management. It is also one of the big part of it. You can definitely see a lot of videos on the YouTube on the PLM. So the so Surendra, like who has explained here on the manufacturing planning, so he is having a 50 plus years of experience. He has worked with large MNCs uh for france for uk as well as many other now organizers and he's our expert who helps our customers to implement their digital manufacturing planning journey starting from conceiving the journey to go step by step phase by phase manner this is the role as a industry expert you can play when you have the deep understanding of the delmia like software what it has so thank you so much, Surendra. So now we'll go to the next step of our webinar, which is questionnaire. We need to understand what is our audience is, you know, what are your uh, you know, demographic, you know, what, where are you coming from, what kind of background you have. And based on that, we can guide you in, in the future, like you know, what could be the possible roadmap for you. So my colleague Deepesh will share a link in the chat window and uh, can you Dibesh, can you please put the link here so that our audience can take the questionnaire and we will give the five sure, minutes. Imagine. Yeah. So it has been posted but before that I would really like to thank you and Surendra. Uh, Surendra it was uh, really beautifully explained and I can uh, proudly say there is a lot to learn from your experience. Uh, and thanks for providing us with the wonderful insights on uh, digital manufacturing industry. So uh, for the audience, like uh, this is, uh, uh, you know, you have the five minutes to fill this uh, questionnaire and then we'll go into the next step where we will explain in more detail what could be the next step. Like if you want to, if this is all sounds interesting to you and if you think that, oh, but how do I take my first step? Like, you know, what could be my... Uh, what is that unknown word? So we are going to describe and explain you know, what is the next step uh, from where you can start after this questionnaire. And then we will open uh, the entire uh, webinar audience for the discussion. You can ask your personal questions as well and we'll be you know, trying to answer as much as possible. So you have another like, five minutes to fill this questionnaire. The link is already there in, uh, in, in the chat box. This, Click on that link and try to go fill it up. Thank you. And we'll wait for five minutes. Link open cover.
So we'll wait for another few minutes. By the time you can feel, and then we can go into some more interesting part of the webinar. Another two minutes. all right welcome back welcome back to the webinar again so thank you so much for uh, participating into the questionnaire like now your inputs will be very much helpful for us as well to plan the future support for those people who are interested to move into the plm domain from the manufacturing industry so now uh, we are going to go into the next phase which is what is required to get into this so what kind of uh, starting point is there from where to start so there are two things you know, as a plm developer or as a plm functional consultant or development manager what it is required so number one 
The most important part is that your willingness to learn the software. You should be the IT savvy. You should love trying with the different softwares, checking the all possible capabilities of the software. If you have worked with the Katia or NX or the Creo, are you going, are you exploring the software? Are you exploring the Google Suite? Are you exploring different capabilities of the YouTube? If you like all these things, then probably you no, know, I can say that you have the inclination towards exploring the IT part or the software parts. So this is one of the very important curiosity or the love for the IT industry for the software is required. This is the very fundamental. The second important thing which is required here is the aptitude. Aptitude or thinking or analyzing the customer requirements is very much important in the IT industry because that is what like you no know, we need to use when we provide the solution to our customer when we need to understand the problem we need to give the solution your mind has to be solution oriented mindset so can i find a solution can i find a solution with all possible options i have so this is the very basic and common required so now if i go very specific to the as, as a plm developer what you need you need to be open to learn the program for the other role which is at the bottom which is as a plm functional consultant or as a development manager or the project manager you may not need to learn the programming but if you want to get as a plm developer you need to learn the programming that also requires uh, sometimes java skills c++ skills .NET skills many people those who are coming from industry or mechanical industry engineering they are learning c++ very easily and they are getting into the katia customization katia automation through the vb script through the cs skills they are getting into the delmia customization by ekl scripting so this is what you need to learn and i already explained you that you can start exploring the programming what is this programming as an email from the w3 school the website so this is what is required you know, for uh, PLM developer and the second part for the PLM functional or the PLM uh, project managers what is required is uh, your industry experience your APQP knowledge your ES16949 or you know IATF knowledge how do we collaborate with the customers what are the quality documents are required uh, how the different manufacturing processes are there so your deep functional knowledge is very much essential and uh, your project management knowledge you know how do you project manage the project you now same way it industry you know, is more or less same when we come to the project management how do we you know define the scope of the work how do we control the timeline how do i control the quality of my product or solution or software and how do I support my resources? How do I build my resources from the training, from uh, hand holding, from support point of view? So basically, it's project management is all about QCD, quality, cost, and delivery timeline, plus resource management. So, and with your functional knowledge, you can easily do this. So now, as a next step, you can learn this programming if you want to be developer. And at the same time, you can update your profile which is where you can put your relevant experience many of you might have used the plm software you know, could be 3d experience could be eras could be siemens plm could be Ubuntu. put that as your experience understand that like you now how you leave your bomb management change management into this plm put that into your profile on linkedin on your resume uh, you can you can also put your CAD design experience into this. So whatever many times many of you might have participated into the PLM implementation from the business side, from the customer side, you know, to participate, defining the business processes, defining the PLM requirement, defining the workflow, defining the life cycle, defining the access control. So your process knowledge, whatever process you had on the paper, you are expert in that. Now put this as your expertise on your profile, you know, because for uh, software industry, your process knowledge 
is very important. Highlight like that. So that is something what the software companies want or PLM software companies want. And and then when you go to the any 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 uh, platform uh, job for a platform like Nokri or Monster or even the LinkedIn, you will find a lot of lot of openings related to this, and you can definitely find those. So these are the starting point and this is how you can take your steps we can also support you with more queries uh, specific to your case and that could be very useful so let me give you a little uh, explanation here that like you know, anybody who starts as a fresh up you know, in IT industry this is the typical roadmap if you start as a PLM developer and let's I assume that like you know, this is somewhere here as a, as a fresh up in the IT industry, then like you no, know, there are easy you know roadmap are uh, sorry yeah easy roadmap are quality engineer or support consultant or even the software engineer if you learn the programming and then like you no know, as you progress in the journey you can be the fantastic solution architect or business consultant or the developer manager, account manager, queue manager. This is the journey which I can see for the people coming from this expertise. So now I go to the next slide. So those who want to be PLM developer, so these are the technologies which are used. Java, JavaScript, SQL, .NET platform. Some, some experience on the, like, some understanding of the Oracle, not into the deal. And all of these are probably delivered on the Linux as a platform. Again, like very basic skills are required on the Linux, on the Oracle, you know, uh but good like those who want to be developer they have to take the good you know uh, grip on java .NET platform sql c sharp javascript this is what you need to learn as you go forward so this is something which you should explore finding you know getting the introduction what is java what are the basic concepts of the java those are the things you can ask to the youtube and you'll find a lot of answers to this so this will be your you know starting point so now let me go to the next slide here so uh let me explain, you know, when you join a PLM company like Steve Graf or any other PLM company, this is what we do. So this is very important for you to know what would be your future world would look like. For example, Steve Graf, when working on the 3D Express platform, we work on some of the products like Inovia, Delinia, Ketia, NetBikes for data analytics, reports, and dashboards. So we at the bottom, if you see the nature of the functional area, which is something known to you, change management, bomb management, document management, configuration management, variance and configuration management, the common management, these are all the things what you are already using in your industry. This is what we implement for our customer. This is where your skills would be very much useful. So on the left hand side, what you see the nature of the projects, what we do, or what kind of the projects what you would be doing if you join the PLM. So you will be doing the consulting you now where you understand the customer and then you are giving them the solution giving them the proposed plan you know, how you should be using the software you will be part of the implementation projects where you know you understand customer's vision about the plm and then map it to the plm software and you implement and roll out and support the users you train the users on the plm software you be you could be part of the upgraded magazine projects where data is migrated from one plm to the another plm and, or they is upgraded from one version to the high version so this is upgraded magazine project integration projects can integration or the erp integration what data should go from plm to the erp what is the input required for the erp you know how the material master is managed you know into the erp and like how it is consumed into the plm so all these business processes are also again implemented infrastructure support or qa and testing of the software plm software what has been already implemented Organizational change management OCM, which is basically training and supporting the users, handholding them so that they can adopt the new PLM platform very easily. So this is another thing what you can uh, be working you know, as part of the project. Or a PLM analytics, which is the dashboards and reporting. And right hand side in yellow, these are the different technologies what we use. You know? so, but the basic is what I have shown on the previous slide. So this is what you are going to do like when you join any PLM organization. So now these are the various customers where Steve Graf has worked, you know, directly or indirectly. So we have worked for many large companies. You can see that like all these companies are using the PLM, like you know, UGA, large, Instrument, you know, Croatia, Tesla, BMW, in aerospace, like you no know, we work for Strata, Boeing, Magnus, uh, Parker. You know. 
So, so there are many, you know, Ericsson, Schindler, you know, Blum, Reliance. So these are all companies who are using the PLM. So these are the customers where you would end up implementing the PLM eventually, or you would end up enhancing their PLM. So these are the you know, various things which you can see. Zoom, then like where you would be working for. So now let me give a little bit more about because this is what you are more aware of. Right? So most of you are aware of the CATIA, which is the CAD designing software. So uh, if somebody who starts as a uh, PLM developer, you know, this is one of the area where you can work, where CATIA customization, using the CA, writing the macro, scripting, you know, how I can automate certain desired operations, how can I put certain validations, CATIA data magazine from V5 to V6. You know, Katia integration, V5, Katia V5, Katia V6. So these are the ways things you would probably uh, end up doing that. Another thing, what probably you could do is like you know, integration. Like all this CAD software, you can see all XCAD, you know, AutoCAD, Inventor, Progress, all this to be integrated with the PLM. And how there are a lot of business processes getting from EBOM from the CAD or you know, or create the CAD from the EBOM depends on customers, you know. Uh, business processes, all, all this kind of mitigation which we do with the PLM. So this is again, you know, some examples where the nature of the projects you could can anticipate. So this is another example, like, you know, of the PLM where the, while designers are working the product design and product development, they need to interact with a lot of suppliers and the vendors. And how do you exchange your data effectively with your you know, vendors? Even today, when if you're working with the auto supplier or the auto supplier, you are getting a lot of data from the OEM. You work on the data, you produce all the documents, you send it back. So if this is happening on the email or FTP drive, then it is very error prone, a lot of hard work is required. But then like you now as a step it up, we have created the supply portal platform where it is integrated with the existing PLM and clients or suppliers can easily download the data and they can do the work and then they can upload it back, you know, and then so on. So this is another example where you could be working on. So uh, now like, you know, let me a little bit give you brief introduction about the steep graph as well. Like you know, we have the strong center of excellence. That means anybody who are uh, joining steep graph, you know, we have the strong training programs. We give the training on PLM. Uh, we give the training on how to configure, how to customize, you know, how to execute the projects. Uh, for those who are joining the QA stream, we give the training on the QA testing, test methodologies, test automation and other things. Uh, we have the advanced tool set you know, to make our services you know, better. You know, if I have the right tool set with me, I can provide my services in the best way. So we focus a lot on developing a lot of reusable tools so that when I go to the different customers, I can do my best. So this is one of uh, Stipraf's key differentiator. You know, we have a lot of tools like you know, tools for data magazine, test promotion, for you know, managing the entire PLM program, uh, scenario tracker. You know, Performance profiling, finding the best performance, or you know, uh, uh, improving the performance of the system. So we do now. Human centric employee development programs we have. So our HR department is always working how we can develop the human beings, like you know, as a you know, more uh, seasoned professional, as a individual with the right values, so they can always deliver the best value to our customers. So this is again, you know, one of our focal area. In our DNAs, you know, which are on the right hand side. So this explains that like how do we work with the people? Like we we make our people how they can give the best of their capabilities, best of their strength. So we call it as a give your 120% to customer. How we can focus on the quality you know, on every aspect? How can we be more efficient? How can I be more agile? How I can deliver the value? So these are the things what is part of the steep graph DNA. And this is what we do. So now uh, we, as I mentioned, we are market leader in PLM software, and our job is to provide the services to all our OEM and customers to implement the PLM software and a lot of PLM services around them. So this is all about the all possibilities and opportunities what are there in the PLM industry. So now, uh, last but most important part is that these opportunities are also existing at Steam Ground. So we are always in the hunt for the people from the manufacturing industry who are interested to join the IT industry, who wants to learn the PLM, so we welcome them. Only condition, as I mentioned, is that they should be 
self-starters, they are willing to learn, they are willing to take, you know, learn the programming. So here are the, some opportunities at the Steve Jobs as a freelance developer. So, so, so on our uh, career portal, career.stevejobs.com, you, know, you will find the opportunity to apply for as a PLM developer. And you will understand what are the job descriptions, what are the expected skills, and what is the experience. Three to five years of experience in the manufacturing domain is good enough to apply for this role of PLM developer. And uh, you can join Stevejobs team, like our brand Stevejobs is based in Pune. We have an office in Pujabari. Uh, that's where like now we execute all these build programs. So for this role, prerequisite is that you, know, you should be open to learn the PLM programs, PLM programming, or sorry, you know, uh, Java or core programming on your own. We can guide you, we can provide you the resources, but the programming knowledge you have to acquire yourself. We will, once you have the basic programming knowledge, we can we can give you the PLM knowledge on top of that. We can we can help you to learn the PLM configuration with the 3D experience or the RAS innovator. What you know, that's where we have the top expertise and we have all the projects. So we will teach you on those things. So uh, this is what is expected. This is the we have the 10 opportunities. Like uh, you can apply to that, and uh, not on coming weekend, but the next weekend we are going to have the drive to evaluate those who are interested. So. We are going to share the link as well, how you can apply to this opportunities. Uh, so you will find these links into the chat uh, chat box, which you can copy and keep it, and you can apply to that. So there is another opportunity what we have is for the PLM project manager. So those who are already playing the role as a project manager into the manufacturing industry, who has the good process knowledge, now for them, this job role is there. And with, when we say PLM project manager, they are actually not only the project manager, but they are also the solution architect. They are also the business consultant. They can understand the customer. So in the job description, you will really understand what is expected from this role. So they play the role as a project manager, but at the same time, they play the role as a PLM business consultant and solution architect, take care of all necessary operations, sectors like hiring, training, building the process, definitions, Customer collaboration and requirement capturing and business process definition. So you can go through these details if this sounds interesting to you, and you can definitely you know uh, apply for this job role. And if you your experience should be eight to twelve years. Okay, that's all from our side. Now we will open for question and answer. So I request the administrator to open the audience to unmute themselves and ask the question, or you can also type your questions into. Uh, the, the, the questions or the chat box. We'll be happy to go down answer your questions. Thank you so much. I stop my presentation and we can open for the questions. Thank you, Mashu. We have given that access to everyone. They can unmute themselves and whatever queries or questions they have, they can ask to our panel. I have also posted, I have also 